Hi, in this section, we're going to continue looking at ratio and proportion and some of the special applications they may be used for. One application for proportions are scale drawings. For example, when a drafter makes a drawing of a machine part, building layout, or other large, large structure, he or she must scale it down. I've been doing this recently. I'm actually supposed to start building my own house this fall. Uh, it's kind of a tiny house, suffix to code, so 750 square feet, but I've drawn it myself um, without an architect, and I definitely had to use scale. I used a scale of one half inch was a foot, and that fit on my, pretty much fit on my 14 by 14 paper because it's a tiny house, but anyway... So I've got some um, experience with this recently. The drawings are larger in life. Our drawings are larger than life involve an expanded scale. For the automobile shown, the ratio of the actual length to the scale drawing length is an, is equal to the ratio of the actual width to the scale drawing width. Okay, they have to correlate. And so, what we're trying to find here is what is the ratio, okay? So, we're going to do the actual length to the drawing length. And that's going to be equal to the actual width to the drawing's width. Okay, and according to our picture, the actual length of this car is 16 feet and 6 inches. And its actual width is 6 feet. Then according to the drawing, the drawing length is 4 and one eighth inches, and the drawing width is one and one half inches. We've got some fractions we got to deal with here. If we divide each side of this, we're not going to cross multiply, but if we divide each side here, then we're going to be able to find the ratio. Essentially, when we divide, we're ending up with the ratio that is to 1, okay? I'm going to erase that because it's not exactly. Okay, so I'm going to divide the left-hand side. So we've got 15, or excuse me, 16 feet and 6 inches. Before we do that, let's go ahead and change this. 16 feet and 6 inches. I'm going to go over to the side here. hope I've got another blank page. Good. What is that equal to in inches is what we're trying to figure out. Because we need everything to be in inches here. We've got feet on our tops. So we need to get everything in the same terms. So how do we change this? Well, there's 12 inches in a foot. So if we take 16 and multiply by 12, that's going to give us the number of inches in 16 feet. And then we're going to add on the 6 inches there. So that comes to 198 inches. So on the top here, We've got 198 inches to still our 4 and 1 eighth inches. And then we're going to also change 6 feet to inches. How would we do that? Well, 6 times 12, 72 inches. 
You're already seeing how I like the color code, right? Okay. So now I'm going to start dividing. So we're going to start with, we'll go ahead to the next page. One hundred ninety eight divided by four and one eighth. Well, we can't divide by four and one eighth by hand. Okay, we have to change that to an improper fraction before we can divide. So I'm gonna go back over here and do that real quick. So, 4 and 1 eighth, keep doing that, would be, here's how we find it. On the top, you do 4 times 8 plus 1. And then the bottom stays the same. Okay? 4 times 8 is 32. Add 1, 33 over 8. So that's how we change a mixed fraction to an improper fraction. You multiply the big number times the bottom and add it to the top. So we're dividing by 33 eighths. Now something else here is the fact that to divide fractions we actually multiply. So this is the same thing as 198 multiplied by, guess what? When you multiply, when you divide fractions, you flip the second number and multiply. So we're changing it to 8 over 33. And that's the same thing as 198 divided by 33 over 8, okay? I'm going to put a 1 on the bottom here, and when you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. So 198 times 8 is 1584. 1 times 33 is 33. Divide, and we get 48. Okay? Now, I'm going to take the other side and divide. So 72 inches divided by 1 and 1 half. We need to change that mixed fraction to an improper again. 1 and 1 half would be 1 times 2 plus 1. So 1 times 2 plus 1 is 3, and the bottom stays the same, 2. So one, and a, 1 half is the same thing as 3 halves. So we do 72 multiplied by 2 thirds. Again, I'm going to put a 1 on the bottom. And so we've got 72 times 2, 144. 1 times 3 is 3. Divide and we get 48. So we can see that on both sides, we got a common ratio of 48, or the way we'll write it as the common ratio is 48 to one. And that is the scale factor of our drawing. Or you could say that the actual car is 48 times the size of the drawing. Example two, it says in this problem, one of the dimensions is unknown. Suppose that a rectangular room has a length of 18 feet and a width of 12 feet. An architectural scale drawing of this room is made so that on the drawing, the length of the room is four and a half inches. What would the width be? Okay, so well, this is important. We need to, if we've drawn it in a specific way, then we need to figure out, well, what the, would the width be in relation to our actual width? Okay. 
So, the length ratio is the actual length that was 18 feet over the drawing length, four and a half inches. We need to change that to inches. 18 times 12, 216 inches over 4.5 inches because we need the top and the bottom to be in the same. The width ratio is 12 feet to some unknown inches. Again, we want to stay in inches because that's what we are with the length ratio. So 12 times 12, 144 inches. So we can take those two fractions, those two ratios, and create a proportion out of them. There we go. And now we can find x. So cross multiply. We've got 216x is equal to 4.5 times 144. And that is, I don't have it written down, 648. Divide both sides by 216 and we get three inches. So the width of the drawing would be three inches. The question also asks us to find the scale factor. Well, the scale factor would be one of those ratios. You could choose either one, either the 216 over a 4.5 or the 144 and stick in the three. going to use the first one and simplify it, okay? So if we divide 216 divided by 4.5, it is 48. So our scale factor is 48 to 1. Now, a draftsman usually... This is what it says here. A draftsman usually has it in um, inches to one foot. So what they would do is 48 inches is the same as four feet. Okay. And so that would be four feet to one inch. Only, they want it to be one foot. So how would we change four feet to one foot? Well, what would we divide by four to get one? Four. And so if we multi divide both sides by one, then we would end up with one foot is the same as one-fourth of an inch. And this makes sense, okay? You wouldn't want to say your scale factor is 48 inches to one inch because when you're drawing it, you're doing it in terms of feet, like I did with my uh, example with building my house and drawing that out. I used a scale factor of one foot to one-half inch. Okay, next, similar figures. In geometry, two figures that have the same shape but are not the same sides are said to be similar. So in a blueprint drawing and the actual object are similar figures. They are the same size or the same shape. This car is the same shape in its 
actuality and in its drawing, but different sizes. So if you've got two triangles, now granted you wouldn't have a triangle that looks like this and a triangle that looks like this, okay? Those aren't similar. They're not the same shape. Just because they're triangle doesn't make them the same shape. They have to be exactly the same shape, uh, but two different sizes are similar. And here's some more examples of similar figures. Now, when you have similar figures, you can write proportions with those, and we've just done that with our scale drawings. So here in these rectangles up top, we've got, we can say this width over the width, so A over C is equal to the length over the length, B over D. And then with this other picture, you've got this measurement over this measurement. So X over P is the same thing as Y over Q. Would be the same ratio as Z over S. And that would be the same ratio as W over T. And then here's an example of two triangles that aren't similar because they're not the same shape. Example three says, suppose we know that two cylinders pictured are similar. To find the missing height, we set up a similarity proportion. So, we've got our missing height over the height of the smaller cylinder. So, three and one quarter inches. And then the height... Then the width of the larger cylinder, 6.3 inches, over the width of the smaller, 1 and 1 half inches. So notice I put larger over smaller. You could put smaller over larger, as long as it's the same on either side. Okay, and so to solve this, we would cross multiply. 1 and 1 half times h is equal to 3 and 1 quarter times 6.3. And you can put that in your calculator. We would end up with, let's see, I didn't write this down. I'll pause it. So 1 and a half is the same as 1.5 in decimal. And 3 and 1 quarter times 6.3 is 20.475. Divide both sides by 1.5. And we get 13.65. So the height of the larger cylinder is 13.65 inches. Example four says a landscaper is designing a garden for a house that is not yet built. He needs to determine how long a shadow the house will cast into the garden area. Uh, that's important. I tried to make a little tiny garden in my yard recently or a couple years ago and nothing grew. Absolutely nothing. There's no sun in my yard. Anyway. To determine this, the landscaper, who is six feet tall, measures his shadow to be eight feet long at a particular time on a summer afternoon. If the roof line of the house will be 15 feet high, where the landscaper was standing, how far from the edge of the house will its shadow extend at the same time of the day? So what we want to do is draw a picture. And they've already got one here drawn for us, but let me walk you through how we would go about doing that. So it says that this man is six feet tall. So we're going to represent him by a vertical line there. And that his shadow, which would be horizontal, is eight feet long, right? It says the roof line of the house goes up to 15 feet. And we're trying to find out how long will this shadow be? Yes. Okay, so 
we can take, I'm going to do the height of the man over the height of the house. And so then we would do the shadow length of the man to find the shadow length of the house. And we're already all in the same units in feet, so that's good. So we have 6S and 15 times 8. So find that, divide by 6, and we have 20 feet. So that shadow is going to extend out 20 feet, so they better put the garden over here somewhere. Direct proportion. Oh, I have my slides messed up. Okay. Well, that's okay. You can still see it, and you can still see it in your notes. But it says direct proportion is two quantities are said to be directly proportional if an increase in one quantity leads to a proportional increase in the other. So as long as increase goes to increase or decrease goes to decrease, then they are directly proportional. For example, five, it says the electrical resistance of a wire is directly proportional to its length. So the resistance depends on its length. The longer the wire, the greater the resistance. If one foot of, I don't know how to say that, nichrome heater element wire has a resistance of 1.65 ohms, what length of wire is needed to provide the resistance of 19.8 ohms? Okay, so the length of our unknown We'll make a ratio to the length of the known. And the resistance of the larger over the resistance of the smaller. Cross multiply. So we have 1.65L equals 19.8. And in the last section, I would spend more time multiplying and and dividing and showing you that but I did that but then so I'm moving a little bit faster through solving a proportion now so dividing 19.8 by 1.65 you get 12 feet so the length of the wire would need to be 12 feet inverse proportion is when two quantities are said to be inversely proportional if an increase in one quantity leads to a proportional decrease in the other, or if a decrease leads to an increase. For example, the time required for a trip of a certain length is inversely proportional to the speed of traffic. The reason being, the faster you go, the quicker you get there. So the faster you go, you're increasing your speed, the less time, the decrease in time that it takes for you to get there. So here's an example looking at that. If a certain trip takes two hours at 50 miles per hour, how long will it take at 60 miles per hour? So let's put 50 miles per hour over 60 and set that equal to the two hours at 50 miles per hour would, if it were directly proportional, go on the top. But since a trip like this would be inversely proportional, then the two hours is going to go on the bottom instead of where you would originally think it would be. And then X hours on the top. And now we can solve for X. 50 times 2 is 100. So X would be 1 and 2 thirds hours once you've simplified. 
pulleys. A particularly useful kind of infer- inverse proportion involves the relationship between the size of a gear or pulley and the speed with which it rotates. In the figure, B is the driving gear. It says because a gear A ha- has twice as many teeth as gear B, when g- gear B makes two turns, A makes one. Okay? So to set up a proportion like this, the speed of gear A would be this over the speed of gear B would be proportional to, inversely proportional, okay, to the teeth in gear B over the teeth in gear A because we are increasing or decreasing. So you've got to be careful with that. So example six says, for the gear assembly shown, if gear A turns at 40 rotations per minute, what is the speed of gear B? Okay, so we want to do 40 rotations per minute. over the rotations in B, okay, so the rotations in A over the rotations in B. Let's write this down. So the rotation of A over the rotation of B will be equal to the diameter or no, 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 the number of teeth. <laughs> the teeth of B over the number of teeth in A. So we got to be careful. So the teeth in B was eight. And then there's 16 teeth in A. Cross multiply. 8B equals 40 times 16, so multiply and then divide by 8, and you get 80 rotations per minute. One more topic, the drive shaft. On an automobile, the speed of the drive shaft is converted to rear axle motion by the ring and pier gear system. So again, this is an inverse proportion. The drive shaft speed over the rear axle speed is equal to the rear axle teeth over the drive shaft teeth. Okay? And pulleys. Pulleys transfer power in much the same way as gears. So the speed of pulley A over the speed of pulley B would be equal to the diameter of pulley B over the diameter of pulley A. So for example A, it says, if pulley B is 16 inches in diameter and rotating 240 rotations per minute, what is the speed of pulley A if its diameter is 20 inches? Okay, so we want the speed of A over the speed of B. And that'll be equal to the diameter of B over the diameter of A. Okay, so the speed of A is what we're looking for. So we'll call that variable A. And the speed of B was 240 rotations per minute. The diameter of A is 20. No, yep, 20. Diameter of B, because that goes on top, is 16 inches, and the diameter of A is 20 inches. M- cross multiply, 20A is equal to 240 times 16. Multiply, divide, 192 rotations per minute for pulley A. And that concludes 
our second section of this class.